A Daily Walk with Pastor in the Bible, Wednesday, June 17th, Psalm 107. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south some wandering in the desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in, hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way, till they reached a city to dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men, for he satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with good things. The Old Testament reading is from Proverbs, the 17th chapter. Better a dry morsel with quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. A servant who deals wisely will rule over a son who acts shamefully, and will share the inheritance as one of the brothers. The crucible is for silver, and the furnace is for gold, and the Lord tests hearts. An evildoer listens to wicked lips, and a liar gives ear to a mischievous tongue. Whoever mocks the poor insults his maker. He who is glad at calamity will not go unpunished. Grandchildren are the crown of the aged, and the glory of the children is their fathers. Fine speech is not becoming to a fool, still less a false speech to a prince. A bribe is like a magic stone in the eyes of the one who gives it. Wherever he turns, he prospers. Whoever counts an offense seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates close friends. A rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding, than a hundred blows into a fool. An evil man seeks only rebellion, and a cruel messenger will be sent against him. Let a man meet a she-bear robbed of its cubs, rather than a fool in his folly. If anyone returns evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. The beginning of strife is like letting out water, so quit before the quarrel breaks out. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous are both alike an abomination to the Lord. Why should a fool have money in his hand to buy wisdom when he has no sense? A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. One who lacks sense gives a pledge and puts up security in the presence of his neighbor. Whoever loves transgression loves strife. He who makes his door high seeks destruction. A man of crooked heart does not discover good, and one with a dishonest tongue falls into calamity. He who sires a fool gets himself sorrow, and the father of a fool has no joy. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. The wicked accept a bribe in secret to pervert the ways of justice. The discerning sets his face towards wisdom, but the eyes of a fool are on the ends of the earth. A foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her who bore him. To impose a fine on a righteous man is not good, nor to strike the noble for their uprightness. Whoever restrains his words has knowledge, and he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us, A little while and you will not see me? and again a little while, and you will see me, and because I am going to the Father. 
So they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves, what I mean by saying, A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you will have sorrow now. But I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you, I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from the Father. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming indeed has come, when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I say these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Take heart, I have overcome the world. A writing from the Apology of the Augsburg Confession Now we shall prove that they actually make the saints not only intercessors, but propitiators, that is, mediators of redemption. For the present we shall not list the abuses among the common people, but discuss only the views of the theologians. As to the rest, even the uninitiated can pass judgment. Two qualifications must be present if one is to be a propitiator. In the first place, there must be a word of God to assure us that God is willing to have mercy and to answer those who call upon him through this propitiator. For Christ, there is such a promise. If you ask anything of the Father, he will give it to you in my name. But for the saints, there is no such promise, and hence, Conscience cannot be sure that we shall be heard if we invoke the saints. Such an invocation, therefore, is not based on faith. Furthermore, we have the command to call upon Christ, Come to me, all who labor, which is certainly addressed to us. Isaiah says, In that day the root of Jesse shall stand as an ensign to the people. Him shall the nation seek. Psalm says, the richest of the people will sue your favor, and may all kings fall down before him, may prayers be made for him continually. In John, Christ says, that all may honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. In Second Thessalonians, Paul prays, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father comfort your hearts and establish them. Grant us 
us thy peace throughout our earthly life. Our balm in sorrow and our stay in strife. Then when thy voice shall bid our conflict cease, call us, O Lord, to thine eternal peace. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, listed up in triumph far above the heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you have promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for the sick, that the Lord would grant them healing, for the wounded in spirit, that the Lord would make them whole, and for the grieving, that the Lord would comfort them, especially for all those affected by the ongoing pandemic and its effects, and those whom we now name. Brandon, Vitra, Rick, June, June, Judy, Cheryl, Aaron, Pastor Brian, Claire, Zachary, Pastor Jim, Pastor John, Maddie, Daniel, Terry, Michelle, John, Janet, and Paul. For the long-term homebound and those in nursing homes, Vitra, Rick, and June, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Luther's Morning Prayer I thank thee, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen or Luther's Evening Prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me, Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.